Room 2 has been released to the public and I wanted to take some time to review it in detail today. Room 2 is essentially a quick experience on Roblox. It gives you the full immersive playing experience for Roblox if you want a Doom-like shooter. However, the game is obviously set in the Doom aesthetics. The gameplay was planned to be different from Room. It is set in a Quake style, which this Quake style represents most of the gameplay for the game. The solo game mode is planned for 2021, and which this one, I can leak some of the story for. Earlier this year, you may remember we actually tested Room 2 and the gameplay was really incredible. I was really impressed, even for a product that wasn't even finished yet. Now that an alpha product is in release, we can review some of the product. The game isn't complete yet, but it's enough to do a review on. So let's get started. My name's Duke Alex, and this is our game review series where we take into account games and review them. Squad and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we will be reviewing Room 2. Before we get started, I'd like to say two things. Firstly, don't forget to subscribe for Roblox drama, news, tips, and tricks, and more. We're only 30 subscribers away from 6k, and it would mean a lot if you'd subscribe. When Room 2's solo campaign comes out, we will have a lot more videos on it than we do now, so stay tuned for that. Technically, I'd like to thank Canyon Jack and Pop Tart Noah, both of who are contributors to the game, for letting me test. I'll explain the story and how I came to test now. The story starts with me working for an account called Roblox RTC, in which this news account they wanted us to report on. Instead we did and we got privileges for that. So I'd like to thank that team too for this wonderful opportunity. And so they were like, hey, would you guys like to test? And I was like, yeah, sure. And so we took up this opportunity. Now that you know the complete history to get us here, let's start with what is room in our grading process. We'll be grading the game in three processes, overall gameplay, scripting, and building. Firstly, let's start with what is room two. Room 2 is a Quake-style game. Let's go over what Quake is. Quake was one of the first 3D first-person shooters games. It has influences from Doom in terms of gameplay, design, and story. For example, Quake features a similar arsenal of weapons as well as teleporters. Features original to Quake, like the console, later appeared in Doom source ports. Once the official Quake source code was released, some Doom source ports incorporated some portions of the Quake source. Quake has three main modes of gameplay, single player, cooperative, and deathmatch, similar to the game modes of Doom. Like Doom, this game mode had demos and speedruns. Influencing the game style that gameplay Doom had, this was the first game by IDE Software to feature 3D models to compare to Doom's duty sprites. Let's now go over overall gameplay. The main objective is for all players to have frag, FPS term to kill, other players to score points. However, should a player off themselves, such as using their own weapon, or get killed by the level design, they lose a point. The objective of the game is to frag people in order to get kills. It's a simple game design but does the job. Also, fun fact, ID Software is named after them as well as it's not just a coincidence that Room Studio is also named ID Software. Despite being called Room, essentially Doom's name but switched to a different naming, it more focuses on this game Quake gameplay style. Room 2 is an in-dev, arena-style FPS that's mostly a fan game of Doom Eternal Stars Doom 2016. It introduces many original elements to its gameplay and world building, as well as a diverse arsenal for multiplayer combat. It features abilities such as an equipment launcher, glory kills, and a chainsaw. It is developed by Pop-Tart Nora and Canyon Jack. The multiplayer features fast-paced weapons, in which these fast-paced weapons make up most of the gameplay. The game utilizes many weapons from Doom and Quake. One example would be the default weapon, the lightning gun, which this weapon makes it most like being a plasma-like shooter. This is the weapon that is given to you on default, and this is the weapons players should learn to master. The weapons that are included in this game, let's go over them. They are mostly included with the power-ups that you can find scattered all over the map. Each weapon is color-coded and comes up as a hologram, in which the hologram signifies the weapon. I believe there are around 6 or 7 holograms and game from my calculations, as well as power-ups as well, such as extra health, extra armor, and more. These seven weapons vary in size, gameplay, and overall style. Let's start with our first weapon, which is the Railgun. The Railgun works at a very high-tech sniper-type weapon, electromagnetic catapult that fires rounds at a fast pace. If you make it around two to three shots in this game, it can knock out an opponent, it is that powerful. The sniper also includes a scope to try and assist the player in getting kills. On its own, it can be a very hard weapon to use with its accuracy, and this accuracy plays a big role in using this weapon correctly. I found that, personally, this playing style wasn't for me because I am not a sniper type player. 
Weapon has a bit of glitches here and there, but it works well, I found. When playing with this weapon, it is hard to use, especially because of the fast-paced gameplay, in which this fast-paced gameplay can play a big factor in the gameplay of Room, because Room is designed to be a fast-paced game, you know? It's Quake. Quake's gameplay works on fluid movements, and using these fluid movements to be fast-paced, which you can change the keybind so that way it's easier to move. Therefore, this is why I found this weapon didn't work for me, but I see why it was added because it was part of Quake 2. Secondly, remember from last video our shotgun? Our shotgun was very overpowered last time, with GDI being a big fan of this game using it everywhere. You saw in his video that I was killed, yay. It was a big oof moment, not in a good way. Our shotgun has since been nerfed, which I appreciate. Thanks Noah, real help. It used to be able to kill in one shot, but this shot has since been nerfed a lot. It takes around 2-3 to three shots to kill. This shotgun is very effective for combo kills in which its range can help with firing 6 bullets at a time. This is why it was the weapon that was used by GDI so much, because this weapon was a great weapon because of its ability to knock out in a couple shots. I think this is my favorite weapon out of them all because of my love shotgun type weapons, I usually play with them in game. This is more of a common type weapon, and this weapon is great. 10 out of 10. Works smooth and fluidly. Next up is our chain gun. A chain gun is a type of machine slash auto cannon that uses an external source of power to cycle the weapon's action, then diverting excess energy from the cartridge propellant as a typical automatic firearm, and does so using a continuous loop of chain drive similar to that used on a motorcycle or bicycle. Basically, the chain gun works as a fun that is an automatic rifle. Although this weapon is fun to use, it uses skill as it requires this game's skill because it is definitely meant for more skilled players, which is why some people took it in arms to dislike the game, which I actually have no idea why because of the skill cap. Before I continue, I'd like to make note of the skill cap because I feel it is important to understand the game because Quake is meant for more skilled players. A new player cannot pick up this game so easily. And this game, I think, as an improvement, just needs a little practice area for newer players because most of the players that play this game play so with a very high skill level. It even says so in the description that it has a high skill cap and they make this very clear. I'd definitely be honest with you guys that I'm not skilled, so I'll try and review the game further from a skilled player's perspective because that way it will be a lot easier for players to understand. Okay, skill cap addressed. The chain gun can fire at very fast speeds similar to the machine gun, which is a completely separate weapon to be clear. Machine gun, however, takes a bit of a boot up when starting, and this boot up can take a while. It's to nerf the weapon. I like the machine gun, but not that much. Maybe a 7 out of 10 for me. I know, shocking. Those are the main weapons you can get, and there is others, but I don't feel they are relevant to address in this review, because it would take too long, and these are the main weapons that you'll usually find in game. Therefore, the original concept. The main objective is to frag all players to score points. Using the weapons as mentioned above, that's how you do it. Some weapons work, and I find others don't depending on your playing style. Obviously, they will be adjusted as they go on, and this will be a work in progress. What the game lacks so far is a storyline, it lacks a solo mode. This is what I think needs to be improved on, and it's confirmed that it will be improved on. I just wish there would be some backstory other than us shooting each other, you know? It's very fun, don't get me wrong, but I like some insight. I'm a very immersed storyline player. I just explained some of the storyline, and I can't wait until the story was added. As it stands right now, gameplay is a 7 out of 10. Now, let's go over scripting. The scripting in the game is absolutely spectacular, no doubt. I think it's absolutely amazing. The scripting has a few bugs here and there. However, I think it is great. 10 out of 10. Building. Other than that, I love the realism. 8 out of 10. And this makes our final score a 7. What are your guys' thoughts on this game? Let me know in the comments below, and thank you.